Ladies and gentlemen on the Trek Gaming Zero.com video, we're going to be discussing AMD's Arctic Islands GPUs because there have been a couple of reports regarding the dates and also a few other tidbits regarding the specifications of the lineup. Now specifically we're going to be focused on Greenland, which of course is the flagship in the 400 series. There is also Baffin and Elsmere, which are going to be more the mainstream parts, but once again we're going to be focusing on the bleeding edge. So according to even AMD themselves, it looks like the cards will indeed be featuring a 14nm low power plus technology, which is absolutely fantastic. It's quite Quite a difference from the 28nm that we're seeing today in both Maxwell and even AMD's current GCN lineup. However, perhaps the biggest deal for those who want to buy the next generation cards is that both South Korea's Electronic Times as well as Reuters have picked up on a story that the cards will indeed be out for end of summer 2016. In other words, we are going to be seeing the second quarter, which has been hinted at. Now, once again, take this with a grain of salt. So, you know, beep, 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 salt truck coming in. Because we've heard a lot of rumors regarding the date, a lot of speculation. And some had actually predicted we wouldn't see the cards until maybe even the third or fourth quarter of 2016. But this doesn't seem to be the case. All signs right now are showing that AMD are getting reasonable yields, that the cards are on schedule, and even AMD themselves have stated that in early November they did announce that Global Foundries um, had taped out multiple products using the 14NM process, and now they are conducting validation work on the 14 LPP production samples, which pretty much obviously uh, is what it says on the tin. AMD have also confirmed that there are a couple of different ways that the next generation GPUs will differ from the current generation. So for the sake of argument, the Fury Xs. One of them, as I've already highlighted in this video, would be the size of the production load. Essentially speaking, reducing this process is going to make big differences, not just regarding the heat, the power consumption, all that jazz, but it means that the complexity of the GPU is going to continue. And it's been something that AMD, as well as NVIDIA and all of their partners, for example, Global Foundries, TSMC, even Intel themselves have been struggling with to keep reducing the sizes of such gargantuanly complicated pieces of technology. Now, Greenland, of course, will be featuring high bandwidth memory too. Let's face it, that train has already sailed. We know HBM is not going anywhere at this point. There are other technologies which possibly will be featured in some of the interim lineups, and these include GDDR5X. Those memory technologies, of course, offer substantial improvements over traditional GDDR5. Some are also calling a 5X potentially GDDR6, but that's beside the point. We're still not 100% sure of the difference, if any, between 5X and 6, just for, your, uh, just for your records. However, sticking with the HBM2, it will be a considerable improvement on several areas over HBM1. One of the largest limitations of HBM1 is only 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, yes, you get 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, but Essentially, because you're limited with the amount of VRAM you can manage to pack on the chip, when you start getting into really high resolutions, particularly with multi-sampling and or massive textures, and let's face it, some textures are absolutely massive now, um, and some games really do demand more, more and more memory, you can start eating into problems. You can start running into problems. And H uh, I'm sorry, DirectX 12 does manage to sidestep some of those issues because of the way that multi gpus work on directx 12 but that's the x12 it's not out now for all games and it doesn't help games which don't use it rather obviously and even if it did if you've got two cards you've only got eight gigabytes of vram which still isn't massive amounts by today's standard let's be honest hbm2 fixes this and supposedly and once again supposedly is not 100 percent confirmation we will be seeing support of up to 32 gigabytes, but it's more likely the consumer variant, the one that you and I buy, is only gonna have 16 gigabytes. I say only, that's still a 
significant uh, increase compared to the 4 gigabytes that a lot of gamers are using now, whether it's a high-end card or even a medium-end card. And once again, the memory bandwidth skyrockets to 1 terabyte per second of bandwidth, which is absolutely ridiculous. We're also hearing that there's going to be around 18 billion transistors in this GPU, which is... Damn, that's, that's a lot of transistors. Let's just be totally blunt here. That's absolutely staggering. I mean, compare that to the Fury X, which has around 8.9, let's say, it's quite 9 billion, you're literally doubling it, which is absolutely crazy in my opinion. So, essentially, these GPUs are going to be built from the ground up with virtual reality or augmented reality in mind, and that's why AMD are being very boastful about the two times performance per watt efficiency increase that we've seen um, mentioned several times over. Naturally, at the end of the day, probably frame rates won't go up if we're seeing it from the perspective of increased resolution. Let's face it, resolution at the moment is a big deal, particularly with virtual reality. And to power the displays, the next generation 4K displays, particularly if you want to do crazy things like 4K surround displays or whatever, it's kind of a big deal. And... Um, it just absolutely vacuums up hardware performance. So it's going to be a very interesting time in the next year or so. Full disclaimer, I am actually at the moment reviewing a AMD card. Um, and it, not the Arctic Islands, just for clarification's sake. And I've been messing around a lot with the Catalyst as well as FreeSync. And I've got to say that they've made some... Uh, by they, I mean AMD, have made some significant changes to their drivers, so hopefully we can continue to see that, and it would be a rather interesting development to see how the next generation cards, that would be NVIDIA's um, Pascal architecture and AMD's Arctic Islands, manage to fight against one another. Hopefully, both companies offer a really, really good price performance ratio. Obviously, for the bleeding edge cards, you do start to drop off in terms of the the, uh, I guess you could say, performance per dollar ratio, because let's face it, the really high-end cards don't necessarily equate to a value or in terms of raw performance to their price, but it should still be pretty cool. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.